Come with me to the book of Ruth. We're going to continue our series, chapter number two. Go to verse 17. And we've been going through this verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We've been doing a study as Ruth is a picture of the church, Bo as a picture of Jesus. The word of God reads like this. It says, so Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it had amounted to an ephah, which was about 30 pounds of wheat. That's a lot of wheat. So remember she was gleaning in the field and so now she had a mountain. Verse 18, she then carried it back to town to her mother-in-law, uh, saw how much she had gathered, who also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had enough. I just want you to see that Ruth was serving her mother-in-law. She had a servant's heart. We're going to come back to that. verse 19. Her mother-in-law asked, where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you, Ruth told her mother-in-law, and the one whose place she had been working. The name of the man I had worked with today is Boaz. I'm going to say Boaz, right? She said, so we're now coming to the part of the story where she will then, Ruth will come into her fulfilled promise, marry Boaz, uh, which would be the lineage of Jesus. But what I want you to see here is that Ruth did not let difficulty stop her from serving God and serving the purposes of God. And that is a picture of us. Verse 20, this is what Naomi says, the Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead, she added. And the man is a close relative, our God and redeemers. I want you to see here is that, notice Naomi now has changed her confession. Previous chapter, she was like, call me Mara, God hasn't been good to me. But now she's like, oh, God is good. But why is she saying that? Because she has seen how Ruth has been faithful to God. And the point is this, when people see how you've been faithful to God, it will change other people's declaration of how good God is when God comes through for you. Come on, somebody, say I'm a testimony. Verse 21, then Ruth and the, the Moabite woman said, he said, he even said to me, stay with the workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it will be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the woman of Boaz to glean with, with until the barley of the wheat harvest was finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Ruth is now going to step into her redeemer, her um, redeemer, which would be Boaz. We'll talk about that in the weeks to come. But the point is she is now revealing her purpose in her life. But here's the point. Naomi, I'm sorry, Ruth had come to this point not because of a bunch of good things. Ruth had come to this point because of pain and suffering. And the story is this. Sometimes God will use, actually all the time, God will use your difficulty to point you to your purpose. And I want to talk today, okay, she would have never, ever met Boaz if it wasn't for the difficulty. And so the title of my message today is a challenging one, but I pray I can communicate it. And I've, I've titled my message, The Blessing of Pain. The Blessing of Pain. I know. I know what you're thinking. What? Stay with me and let's, let's jump into this. Bow your heads and let's pray one more time. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. Thank you for your presence. Because God, we gather today not, not to hear the word of man, but to hear the word of God. And Lord, we just pray that your scriptures would empower us, would equip us, that we may become the men and women that you've called us to be. Lord, I thank you that even when we go through difficult times, we have you. God, you can walk through us and you can show us and lead us. So speak to us today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray all of God's people say, amen. Give God one more clap. You may be seated and just turn to the person next to you and tell them every pain has a purpose. Just say that every pain has a purpose. So, so good. I want to talk today, God, about how pain has a purpose, but it can actually become a blessing. And as I talk about that, I know it's difficult because all of us have gone through painful times. Just so I know, okay, we're all honest people here. I know all of us. I know this is true about me. I hope it's true about you, but we've all gone through painful times. And if you've gone through something painful or difficult, can you just lift your hand? Let's see if some honest people in church. Everybody look around. Okay, we're in good company, okay? Come on. And just tell your neighbors, say, we've all gone through painful times. And you could say, especially with you, just joking, don't say that. <laughs> okay. We've all, everyone, okay, has gone through a difficult time. In other words, pain or something painful is inevitable, okay? It is impossible to try to live a life that will never go through a painful or difficult time. But here's the thought I want to challenge you with today. 
is that, watch me now, not all pain is bad. I'm going to say it again. Not all pain is bad. That some pain, God will use it to actually develop you like nothing else. Okay, I'm going to start with this analogy because I, I got to break down the thought. Why don't you come up here, brother? Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, give me that real quick. And, and, and I, got, I got to wait here, okay? And uh, I could pick this up during the, during the pandemic. They shut down all the gyms. I was like, really quick, got me a weight set. And so, so I'm doing curls at home. And uh, so, but this weight set. And this weight set, um, when I was introduced to weights, I mean, I'll never forget when I was young playing sports and I started, you know, working out to develop, um, that the only way I could develop my muscle was if I was willing to add some pain. Okay, okay, follow me here, follow me here. And then I was introduced to this crazy thought because the harder it got, my coach would yell at me, one more, one more. I'm like, bro, my arm's going to fall off. <laughs> but the point is that I could not develop it if I ran from the pain. Come on, someone's going to get it, right? I could not grow that strength unless I embraced or pushed through the pain. But if I tried to avoid it, I would have no strength. Now, come over here, bro. And uh, let's do your, we're going to do the left arm. He did the right arm the last service, so we just want to make sure that way, you know, be balanced it out. It'd be all like this, you know what I mean? So, and you're going to do it because I'm not going to be sore the rest of the week. Uh, I got a lot of services to preach. So... I want you, that, that, that's, a, just, that's about 100 pounds, I'm joking. That's 20 pounds. Just, just give me 10 with your left hand. He's a Marine, so we're going to take a long time. Just keep it going, bro. Give me 10. Right form. Look at that. He's not swinging. All right, good job, right? Some of y'all like, don't swing, don't swing. Okay, just right form. Just give me 10. Now, is it getting harder as you keep going? Yeah, it does. Okay, I know you can do like 100. You're a Marine. Um, just pretend like this was the hardest one. Oh, like give that grimace face. Hold it right there. Hold it halfway. Hold it halfway right there. Okay. Now, it got harder, right? Here's the crazy thing. Is the pain you feel, it's actually developing something in you. This pain is not di degressing you. It's actually building you. And if you run from this pain, you will not build the muscle and strength you need to be a Marine. How many know we need strong Marines? Come on, somebody, okay? So he's like, when I kind of put this down? Okay, you can put it down. And so you can't build that strength by sitting on the couch eating marshmallows and bonbons watching TV. You can only build that strength by going through some painful things. And all I want to challenge as the first thought this morning is there are certain things that God cannot develop in your life aside from some difficult things or some pain in your life. And all I'm trying to tell you is don't run from it, but you got to learn to let it produce something inside of you and you will see God use that pain, come on somebody, for a purpose. Amen. Now, as I say that, I know what you're thinking because I think the same thing. Who in the world wants to welcome pain? None of us, right? I know, Sign me up for a painful life. None of us. I get it. I get it, okay? But what I'm trying to tell you is that God doesn't cause it, but he will use it. Okay? Remember that. God doesn't cause it, but he will use it. And there are certain things in life that will not be produced by pleasure, but only by pain. Stay with me here, okay? Right? I cannot produce a six-pack. Still praying for that. My wife said, come on. I got a one-pack. Just show, Come on. Sorry. I cannot produce muscle or I cannot produce strength always seeking comfort. So God will use this in our lives. Now, now it's important to, to say this, that as we live our lives, of course, there are different types of things that come to us, right, that we, 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 we go through. And most of us, we try to avoid pain, but pain is inevitable. And let me just say this. So the real question or the bigger question is not, God, how do I avoid pain in life? But rather, God, how do I let you use the pain to develop my life? That's the real question. 
Because you can spend your life saying, well, I'm just going to avoid it, and I'll never go through nothing difficult. And it's like, have you lived a little? Come on now. All right? And so we as believers have to understand this, that God never promised us a life without suffering or pain. Okay? He never promised us that. And if you ever heard a preacher say that, he wasn't telling you the Bible, tr Bible talk, okay? Is we will go through difficult things. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The Bible says that in Jesus said, in this world, we will have trouble. In other words, can I get an amen, okay? That we will have difficult times, but then Jesus says, but don't lose heart. I have overcome the world. Point is, it is promised that we'll have difficult times. But what makes believers different than the world is that we have a God to go through it with where the world doesn't have that. Come on. Would you rather go through it with God or without God? Come on. I'd rather go through it with God. So that's what, so it doesn't make you a believer like, well, I don't go through nothing. Well, that's not true. Okay. We all go through stuff, but believers are different because we have God to go through it with. And so we have to live this. Now there are different types of pain. Of course, I'm not only talking about physical, but we are different types of pain. I'm just going to name some here, but maybe you are going through a physical pain or maybe you have any emotional pain. Maybe you have mental pain. Maybe there's spiritual pain. Uh, maybe there's pain from relationships um, that are in your life. Maybe you're experiencing financial pain, going through some hard times uh, right now. Maybe you're struggling with painful memories, right? Things that often come in your mind that cause you to be discouraged or to, to suffer or to be hurtful. Um, that's, that's a lot. Maybe you're dealing with pain of a loss of a loved one. Maybe someone passed away and you're, you're dealing with that at this moment. Maybe you're, 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 you're going through a different pain of a letdown. And the point is, all of us are going to feel this in life. And, and I got to answer this question. Stay with me here because when I open this topic, it, it's, it's, a big, it's a big topic and I got to cover as many bases as I probably, I, I, or overturn every rock I possibly can, is we go through this pain. But what you need to know is God is not the originator of pain and evil. Okay? Now, um, my son must have known what I was preaching out. You know, them kids, they, they, they'll ask you them tough questions because yesterday he asked me, he says, Dad, he didn't know I was preaching today. He says, Dad, if God's real, why is there evil in the world? That's what he asked me. And I was like, oh, okay. This man of God, okay, come to church tomorrow, man of God. I mean, I said, like, listen to the word, brother. You know, but I was like, oh, you don't even know what I'm preaching on. But he's like, he's in the spirit already. But you know, them kids, they ask you them tough questions. Like, they'd be like, why is that? And you're like, and you just go, because it is. Be quiet, kid. <laughs> right? You know, but <laughs> that's it, right? But of course, you can't just tell them that. You got to coach them and, and, and disciple them, right? So my son asked me, he says, Dad, why, why, you know, yesterday? So I said, that's a great question, son. I said, the reason why is not because God caused it, okay? That's not the reason why. The reason why is because sin. And sin entered the world when humanity chose away from God. Okay, so stay with me here. It's a big question, okay? So, and parents, take notes because your child's gonna ask you this, okay? Sooner or later. And I said, because sin entered the world through a person's decision. And all evil is the result of a person's choice. Either you're the, you're the, you are the recipient of someone's bad choice or you're the one making the bad choices and hurting someone else. It's because of free will. God's greatest gift, son, was free will. He gave us free will. And we either will use it to be a blessing or use it to hurt people. So that's why you got to make the right decisions. Like listen to your mom and dad. And see, I should start throwing it in there. You know what I mean? Come on, somebody. And do good in school. And don't be doing drugs. And tell me if anybody else. <laughs> That's why you got to learn the word. Parents are trying to help you right here. They just slide it in. Might as well. Since we're talking about it. You know. Hook up with the right girl. Let's talk about. You know what I'm saying. Like. Oh, let's just go for it. I was going for it. <laughs> you know. And they say. Wow. I preach it pastor. You know. <laughs> That's what he said. And so I began to tell him. I was like. I said. But God can get rid. Listen to me. Okay. I'm trying. They're trying to answer this question. It's a big question. Why is all this hurt? And why is there all this suffering? You know, I said, God can get rid right now of all evil in the world, but he would have to take away your free will. So do you like your free will to choose? Everybody's going to say yes, but he'd have to take away, and you would have to be a robot, not a person. See what I'm saying? And, well, I want to be a person. Okay. Or the other way God can get rid of all the, all the evil is he would have to get rid of all humans, including me. Because have you ever done something bad? I'll raise my hand. Come on now. Right? 
But that's the grace of God. So it's a gift from God. And, and, I, and, and we have to realize this. So if you're here saying, well, why did God let this happen? Why would God? God didn't make it happen. It's the result of sin. It's the result, right? Our bodies are decaying because sin entered the world. And, and Jesus wept when Lazarus died. Why? Because God never planned death. He wanted life. But the disobedience of sin causes our bodies even to break down. And what I want to tell you is God is still alive. And, and for those that are readers, here's a book for you. Um, it's, it's, it's called The Problem of Pain by C.S. Lewis, one of the most brilliant minds uh, in our human uh, uh, writing. And, and uh, it's a hard read, written in 1940. Okay, C.S. Lewis was a former atheist who then turned to Christianity and, uh, and, and he turned to God and he wrote about pain and suffering during the 40s, obviously uh, just after the Great Depression and things like that. But he wrote about it, and this is what he said. The question is not to ask, why is there evil? The question to ask is, is why is there good? Okay? Because we say, well, why is there evil? Well, because we're sinful. But the real question to ask is if the world is so evil, why is there good? You want to know why there's good? Because there's a God. And every person is made in the image of God to want to do what is right. Come on, somebody, and serve God. He's a brilliant. It's, it's a hard read. I'm saying it right now. Okay, so if you're like, and, and obviously, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Hard for me to recommend books because, you know what I mean? But the point is, we need to ask God you're at work. And what I'm trying to tell you today is that all oh, pain, suffering, and evil, God is not the originator, but God will use it. God will use it. God will turn it. God will use it to develop us. God will use it for us to be a testimony. God will use it to show his power in our lives. Come on, somebody, say amen. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because in the verses we just read is we have to understand that even though pain is inevitable, we have a choice how to react. We have a choice of how to respond to these things of life. And the verses we just read, Ruth had a choice. Ruth, as we've been studying, went through difficult times, right? She had the loss of her husband. She, her father-in-law passed away. They were going through financial hardship as she was, you know, gleaning from the fields. It was a form of a welfare system. They were living off, you know, just scraping the bottom of the barrel. They didn't, they didn't have a place of their own. They were going through difficult times. But what Ruth did is Ruth did not let the pain become her prison. She let the pain become her purpose. And what I want to tell somebody today is don't let pain become your prison. Let it become a purpose and let God transform it. Come on now and use it to develop us. Have you ever met a person who allowed the pain to be the prison? That every day, every week, every year, what stops them from living for God, enjoying life, treating people the way they should be is because they live in a prison of pain. God wants us to live in purpose. Somebody say amen. But the way that happens or the way that takes place is we have to be willing to make a choice. So how can pain be a blessing? Write this down. Point number one. This is how pain can be a blessing. Pain can be a blessing if you choose to use my pain or your pain. You choose to use your pain to get closer to God. Come on, somebody. If you choose, it can be a blessing. Whatever difficult thing you're going through right now. You, it can be a blessing to you because you can choose to let that let you get closer to God. Because there are only two options. Listen to me now, please, okay? There are only two options when difficult times come. You can either run from God or you can run to God. You can, it's all, there's a two options. You can run from God or to God. And I'm going to tell you, pastoring now 14 years. Blows my mind. I've been pastoring for 14 years. Come on, somebody. 14 years. Let's go. I'm going on another 14. Let's go. Two weeks, I'll be saved 25 years. Woo, hallelujah. Quarter century. You're like, you look 25. It's called Jesus exfoliation. You know what I'm saying? Stress-free living. <laughs> my wife was at the store and someone said, you have four kids. You're 40. Oh, my goodness. You look like you're 25. She's like, what, what's, what do you do? She's like, come to church. That's what I do. Come on now. It's called... It's called prayer. What's your skin routine? Prayer, like this. Come on, I give it to God. You know what I mean? Anyway, so. <laughs> Squirrel, where was that? Okay. Two options. You can either run from God, listen to me, please, or you can run to God. And, and I've seen both of them. In the 14 years that I've been pastoring, listen, I've seen both of them. I've seen when a believer 
who's attending church, worshiping God, reading their word, and then a difficult situation comes. And then they run from God. I've seen it. They run from God. And when they run from God, I've seen things go from bad to worse. I'm trying to help you. I want to pastor you. I have never seen it go from bad, run from God, better. It gets worse. I'm I'm trying to help you. It gets worse. And then what ends up happening is they run to the wrong thing. And what they add to pain, they end, then they add shame to it. And now they're battling pain and shame. Come on, somebody. And this is the part of the message where I just want to say that if you ran from God in the past, here's the good news. You can run to God right now. Come on, somebody. You can run to him. You're watching online. You're in Irvine Fullerton. Let this be the day, February 6, 2022, where you said, I'm going to run back to God. I'm going to come to him because I need him to change my life. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Because I've seen that they ran. And listen, let's be honest. I, we've all been there where we ran from God when things got tough. But learn from other people's mistakes. Run to God. And, and what you run to, some people run to the wrong person. They run, instead of running to God, they run from God and they run to a bottle. They run to a needle. They run to a drug. They run to a place. They run to the X. I, I'm looking at the floor. Someone say run to God. Conversely, I've seen the same thing where a person who's serving God is reading their word, worshiping, attending church, and then a hard time comes. Boom. And instead of running from God, they run to God. I've seen them. All hell, they run to God. And, and now, now things got hard. They say, I'm going to press into God. And then hell comes at them more. They start praying more. And then things start going crazier. But they're like, I'm going to get crazier for God more. And then, and then this goes wrong. But they're like, I'm still going to worship. And I'm still going to pray. And I'm still going to seek God. And I'm still, and let me tell you something. I have seen pastoring for 14 years that that person, maybe things didn't get better right away. But I've seen that person get stronger in their faith. I've seen that person worship God. I've seen that person fall in love with Jesus. I've seen that person get some grit in their godliness. I've seen that person, come on somebody, begin to forge themselves in Christ. And I've watched them. And I can say this now. I know it's a trip. I'm getting older. Oh Lord, help me. It's not fair to get older. But it's good. You get a little more wiser. I have seen now seven year prayers. I've seen now 10-year prayers. I have relationships with people that have pastors. I've been believing God for this for 10 years, pastor. And I say, look it. It's because you ran to God. Oh, God. Is there anybody in here who can testify with me right now? And I said, it's because you ran to God. And that seven-year prayer, that 10-year prayer, God is faithful. God is good. And if you had to wait, whatever time you had to wait, imagine if you would have gave up. That's why you can't give up. That's why you can't give in. That's why you can't go back. Because you are the link to the miracle and the blessing in somebody else's life. Someone shout, I'm going to run to God. I've seen it. it. So you can use right now. And I'll tell you 10 years from now, because I ain't going nowhere. I'll be right here. What's up? <laughs> but I remember you told me, Pastor, I was 10 years. I've been praying for this for seven years. And some of y'all don't know this, but you are the miracle. They've been praying for you. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> I say, come on, if you're that miracle, just say, well, I'm just, all right. And, and so... What we have to understand, here's the scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let me read the verse. The Bible says, and we know, watch this now, that what? In what? Notice we know, as the body of Christ, we know that in all things God works for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so here's my greatest advice to you. Listen to me, please. My greatest advice to you. When you're going through something difficult, press into God when pain is pressing into you. Press into God when pain is pressing into you. And there are three things you need that, what does it mean? Because I don't want to be ambiguous here. What does it mean to press into God? Write this down. Here's how you press into God. You need the presence of God. 
You need the word of God and you need the people of God. I'll say it again. You need the presence of God, you need the word of God, and you need the people of God when you're going through something difficult. Do not isolate yourself. Don't remove yourself. And that's how pain can be a blessing because you can actually use it to get closer to God like never before. You see, when you're going through a painful time, let's be honest, when you're going through something difficult, your prayers, your, your, your prayers, I like to call it, they go from King James Version to Message Bible. Come on. When you're going through something difficult, you, you like get, Lord, I need you. Come on now. Let's be honest, right? You know, when you're going through nothing, you're like, oh, oh, our Father who are so good. I honor thee. Make my coffee drinking temperature, you know. You're like, okay, cool. But when you're going through stuff, you're like, God, I need you like right now, like four days ago. I need you like last week, like, Lord, I got, I'm, I, I got time for no formalities. I don't got time for like, oh, Lord, I'm just right here. I call, I'm just getting ugly before God that, Lord, I'm desperate for you. And I'm telling you that you can use this moment to build your relationship with God like never before. And the man of God, the woman of God you'll become will always point back to that one time when all hell was breaking loose. That's when you had intimate prayer moments with God. That's, that's what it is for me. My most, I say it like this. Your greatest season with God won't always be your favorite season. Okay. I'll say it again. Your greatest season with God won't always be your favorite season. When my wife couldn't, we couldn't have kids and, and, you know, we're going through infertility issues and, you know, pregnancy, failed pregnancy after failed pregnancy. Then, then and, you know, then she had miscarriages and, and, and it was just i never forget those intimate moments of prayer I had with God when I was crying before the presence of God and I would be praying on my knees saying, Lord, would you heal us? Lord, would you, would you, would you, you know, help us, God? Would you bring them? I'll never forget those intimate moments with God are what has made me today to hear the voice of God more clearly. It could be a blessing. It could get you more close to God like you've never been before. Don't run from God. Run. Run where? Run to God. Next point. Let's write this down. i got to move quickly here. Help me, Jesus. Uh, actually, no. Job, no. Let me read this verse. Job 36, 15. The Bible says this. It says, but by means of their suffering, he rescues those who suffer, for he gets their attention through adversity. Anybody, God ever got your attention through tough times? Come on. He'll get your attention. So I'm just letting you right now, uh, God, God's going to get your attention. Don't you worry about that, okay? Let's move on. Point number two, how can, it, how can pain be a blessing? It could be a blessing if you choose to use my pain or your pain to serve other people. In other words, let what you're going through deepen the way God uses you to minister and to serve other people. Life is not all about you. Life is about how God uses you. But here's what can happen is when you go through a difficult situation is you begin to internalize or isolate yourself and you think, well, oh, I'm going through something so I'm not going to do anything for God. I'm just going to isolate myself. I'm going to lick my own wounds. I'm just going to uh, uh, sing me a, a you know, the cry me song. I'm just going to be depressed in my room. But if you will allow it, you can actually, God will let use you to help other people. And watch this kingdom principle, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 25. Here's what the Bible says. Proverbs 11 and verse 25. The Bible says this. It says, a generous person will prosper. Proverbs 11, 25, it says, a generous person will prosper, and it says, whoever refreshes others, what does the Bible say, will be what? So your refreshing, your encouragement, the Bible says, is locked in you encouraging somebody else. Come on now. You, meaning God will refresh your life by, God, by you helping somebody else who's going through what you're going through. That's powerful. And so wherever you are right now, God can actually encourage you and use you to encourage somebody else what you're going through. Because what you're going through, you understand what someone else is going through. It's like you don't know till you know. Like you don't know. You don't know. Like, yeah, like people don't have kids. I don't know. What's wrong with their kids? It's like you don't know nothing. When I have kids, I read books and I have kids. Read your books. Just wait till your kid shows up. <laughs> He's not in that book. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying like, well, you'll find out, all right? They're going to have to make a new page for that kid, all right? <laughs> you don't know nothing, you know what I'm saying? You don't know till you know. Right? 
You see people with marriage, when we get married, we're not going to have no problems like them. It's because they don't know our love is so deep. Our love is real. We'll make one extra room for you at the marriage conference in a couple years. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Okay. We got you covered on that. You don't know nothing. Okay. But conversely, when you've gone through it, you know like no one else knows. And I'm telling you, God can use your life to serve others. Like if you're going through something. If you're, if you're going through a physical situation, if you're going like a, you're currently a painful situation with kids or relationships or, or you're suffering family or you're, you can't, you know, you, God can use you because you know it lets you serve people. Like, for example, my, my father passed away um, last year. Um, unfortunately, he had succumbed to drug addiction and, and just living that type of lifestyle and took a toll on his body and he passed away and I lost my father and now I have such a a bigger empathetic heart for people that lose someone because now I I can say this I I know exactly what that feels like even though I didn't have the greatest relationship with my father I know what that feels like and what I'm telling you is what you're going through or what you're overcoming can be the greatest ministry, the greatest way for you to pray for other people and to be used by God. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why the prayer, my, 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 just one of my inner prayers is that our church would be a church that's there for one another. Like for real. And and that's why Galatians 6, 2 says it like this. Jesus has, there's principles. Here's what Jesus said. Okay. I got a teaching me today. The Bible says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill what? The law of Christ. The Bible says that we we can help carry each other. Like we got each other's backs. We'll, we'll, We'll pray for one another. We're like cheer each other on. We're like happy to see each other at church. Like we're not at, we're not, there's no gossiping. There's no, why? Because we're all on the same team. We're going to the same heaven. Come on, somebody. We're serving the same God. We got the same Holy Spirit. This, this is no barrio stuff. This is heaven stuff. This is no this team versus that team. We're all on Jesus' team. And we're here to carry each other, serve one another, and love one another. Come on, turn to someone you don't know and say, I got you. Just say, I got you, man. Tell them. You don't know them. Say, I got you. I got you. Like, we just, like, that's church. That's family, you know? Because there's something you're currently going through that I bet you someone else. That's why I love our connect groups. You know, they're coming up, and our connect groups are about that. It's about you getting connected to God's family. But it's also about you making biblical friendships. Okay, here are the four levels of biblical friendships. Let me teach this really quick. Four levels of biblical friendships, okay? Write this down. Because I often people say, well, I wish I had more friends. I'm going to tell you how to get more friends, how to get biblical real friends, okay? Here are four levels of biblical friends. The first level, which is the most, it's the starter level. It's the, it's the shallowest level, not that you're a shallow person, but just the starter. The first level of biblical friendships is people you share stuff with. That's like you just share stuff with. That's the first level of, of like friendships. And so that's like, for example, you say, man, you see how, how bad the Rams beat the 49ers last week? It was incredible. And just had to throw that My Rams fan, sorry. It's just, we're just talking, sharing that. Like what? I just sharing. So that's just people you share stuff with. That's the first level of friendships. Most people stop right there. And that's why you're not being carried or carrying someone else. The second level of biblical friendships goes a little more intimate. And that's people you study the Bible with. Like this room, that's why we have a spiritual connection. Because you study the Bible with us together. Irvine, Fullerton, online, Espanol. And you're like, oh yeah, we go to the same church. So if you see each other at the grocery store, you're not like, oh snap. You're like, hey, we go to the same church. There's, there's a connection. There's a biblical friendship, right? So I would hope that if you saw one of your church members with a flat tire, you don't just keep driving. You know, you're like, hey, they go to my church. Let me help them. You know, you see them at the grocery store carrying bags. Hey, you need some. Oh, we go to the same church. I saw you. You were in the fourth row or, you know, what? right? So anyway, people you study the Bible with. That's the second level. The third level is people you serve Christ with. So that's why there's a spiritual friendship connection with people that you serve with in the kids' church, 
You serve on the welcome team outside, you know, welcoming people to church and helping them park their cars. You serve, you know, on the greeters. The, you serve, uh, you know, ushers. You, you serve at church, and that's a team. They're like, hey, we're the ushers, man. Let's go. Or, you know, hey, we're the worship team. And you just, you serve with. There's a spiritual. Or you go on a missions trip with a certain group, and you go, man, remember we went on that missions trip? And you're just, there's a, there's a spiritual connection when you make a difference together, okay? Or maybe you did feed, feed the need or adopt a home project, and you just... You serve together on the team. And then the deepest level, I gotta move quick here, of friendships. Very few get to this level, but here's how pain can be a blessing. The deepest level of friendships are people you suffer with. People that you go through difficult things with. That, that my friends, is where you have real biblical friendships, yeah. And few people get to that level because they try to live their life like, I go to church. It's fantastic. And it's like, no, get into a connect group and build some real friends and be like, you know what? Where's the camera? What camera are we on? Let's go to this camera. And you're like, hey, what you need to say? Hey, you know what? I, I just, I need prayer. I'm going through a lot of my marriage right now. All right, with trusted people. And, you, and when you do that and you journey with another believer, like that right there is when you have real friends. In fact, I'll say the only real friends you have are the friends you can be real with. What you're going through. Not the, not the ones you try to show off with. I'm great. Hey, your friends. It's the stuff like, hey, you know me and I know you. And when you have those friendships, then you're fulfilling of carrying each other's burdens. We are like, I'm going through stuff with my kids, my marriage. Maybe your integrity. Maybe there's an issue, but you're like, I need prayer. Come on, somebody. That's why you need to get into a connect group. I mean it. To build these real godly friendships. Don't miss your opportunity to build these friendships God wants in your life. And God will begin to use that in such a a marvelous way come on somebody put a good amen on that right now and so this is how it happens now I will just throw in this point the reason you'll be close to any relationship my wife and I we've gotten close not because we know how to have a good time we've gotten close because we know how to get through hard times come on somebody okay? like real talk anybody can have a good time okay anybody can have a good time it's easy you just go and yeah Okay, that, doesn't, that doesn't make you like compatible. It doesn't make you deep relationships. The deep relationships are the people you can get through hard times with. And, the, and our marriage, my relationship is because we're committed to each other. And this last one, and I'm done here. How can the pain, how can difficult times be a blessing? It could be a blessing if you choose to use my pain, your pain, to be a testimony to others. Come on now to be a testimony to others. In other words, God using your life, God using you, you to be a testimony to somebody else, a testimony of how God can take someone from their hard times, their suffering, and you become someone who is a witness to the world of how not how awesome you are, but how awesome God is who took you through all of those difficult times and developed your life. Somebody say amen. Paul the Apostle was an awesome apostle, but look what he said here, 2 Corinthians 11, 25 to 28, says, this is, are they servants of Christ? I know I sound like a madman. I have served far more. He says, I've worked harder. Watch what he says. This is Paul's resume. I've been in prison more often, been whipped times without number, and have faced death again and again. Paul says, five times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. In other words, they whipped him 39 times. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. He says, once I was stoned with rocks. Just got to qualify that. You'll get that later. He says, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people and the Jews as well as the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. Hello, right? I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty and have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm then besides all of this I had daily the burden of my concern for all the churches that sounds like a difficult life wouldn't you agree 
But here was Paul's revelation, Philippians 1.12, New Living Translation. He says this, And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped spread the good news, has helped spread the good news. And all I'm trying to tell you, listen, that God will use your life as a testimony because you, not because of your successes, but because of your scars. The world is not impressed with your successes. The world is impressed by how you overcome scars. God is shown by how real he is when his people say, I didn't give up when times got hard. I didn't throw in the towel on my relationship with God. I didn't just run away from God when all the pain came. But what I'm going through was my greatest blessing because I pressed into God. I knew who God was. And now you are a testimony for the world that God is real because he healed you from that situation. He healed you from that hurt. He healed you from that emotional pain. He healed you from that memory. He healed you and transformed you for the glory of God. And now you're a walking miracle of the power of God. Come on, somebody. Say amen. I close here. Let's all stand to our feet and I close here. Joseph was probably a life that had more ups and downs. I did a whole series on Joseph. You can search it on YouTube for about six months. But Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers. He was then promoted to Potiphar's house, falsely accused for something he never did, then thrown into prison again. And then he was promoted to Potiphar, I'm sorry, to Pharaoh's second in command. And all through that, Joseph, the Bible never talks about Joseph crying. He didn't cry when he was thrown into the pit. He didn't cry when he was falsely accused. He didn't cry when he was in prison. He didn't cry when he got promoted with successes. The Bible tells us one time when Joseph actually cried. And it was when his brothers came to him, his family. And the Bible says he wept. Because now, he says, now... Everything I prayed for, the, the times, about 21 years, he says, is a reality. Because the dream, all that he had suffered, was now coming true. And Joseph says in Genesis 50, 20, he says, you intended to harm me, but God turned it, <laughs> intended it for good. Watch this now to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. He then wept and said, God, what I knew he would do, I didn't give up on God, I was faithful to him, and now my life is a testimony to help somebody else know that God is real. And I'm gonna say it like this, that's why you can't give up. That's why you can't give in. That's why you can't go back. That's why you can't throw in the towel. Because your testimony is connected to somebody else believing in God. Because your life is a testimony of the power of God. Hey, thanks so much for watching our service at Freedom House OC. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always my honor, my wife's honor to bring you God's word. And I know that God's best is in your future. Make sure to share, uh, click the bell icon so you're always up to date when new content comes out because we want to be a blessing to your life. We want this channel to be a channel that feeds your future and leads you closer to God. Hey, we love you. God bless.